All right, guys, one of my weird and wonderful videos. Um, so essentially, I've got a problem with my uh, hot water. Um, heating's absolutely fine, just the hot water. And what's happening is um, the temperature here, max is 60 is what the boiler can output. Um, when I run the shower, it goes hot and cold, hot and cold, and very, very hot and very, very cold. Um, and then slowly equalizes maybe after 15 minutes and then after scolding you, um, uh, it just goes to a nominal kind of, you know, low temperature or lukewarm water. Um, the issue, fundamentally, that issue is due to um, what is called uh, the secondary heat exchanger or domestic hot water heat exchanger or plate or plate to plate, I think they call it. Um, it's a unit that looks like this, which I've just taken out. I'll show you quickly how I've done that. Um, now, it, hot water goes in from the radiator um, or, you know, the gas boiler um, in the first heat exchanger, comes back out and then subsequently heats up the other uh, fresh water supply to your shower. Um, and what happens is if lime scale builds up or sludge from the uh, the closed loop system, um, the water slows down. And when the water slows down, um, it heats up quicker um, because it's not able to dissipate out of this unit quick enough. Um, and when it heats up, um, there's an NTC uh, temperature gauge, which you can just about make out, which is this little sensor here, stops the hot water, um, uh, hot water from heating up, which means the cold water flows through and you get that kind of uh, a fluctuation. So how do you fix it? You gotta change that heat exchanger. Bought it for a hundred quid. Um, just put the rings on. It's been a bit of a git to get out. To be fair, I've, I've been okay. The people have had uh, a more difficult uh, journeys trying to get it out. I've actually been not too bad, to be fair. Um, if I take out the front end of this, you can see, um, essentially there's two screws, one there, and one there. Um, now you can't just take it out, okay? There's a few steps you gotta take. You gotta drain down your water system. There is a way to do it where it's just the boiler water you can drain out. I'm not experienced enough to understand that fully. So to be safe, I drain down my whole radiator system. Um, now there's a few valves you wanna shut off, essentially everything that you see here. Um, and what I've done is I've got a garden hose so this is the back of the, uh, my living room. Um, garden hose, stuck it onto this pipe here. You should see this somewhere on the ground floor. And then I've released this valve, um, the hose was on there, um, and pumped it straight outside. Um, now, not all the water drains out, so you have to go onto your uh, radiators and bleed them so the air can go in to allow the water to come out. This also applies to upstairs. Now, if you don't, uh, if your boiler's downstairs, you're going to need to really drain from upstairs. Otherwise, you'll find water just flushing down on you while you're changing and doing stuff on the boiler. So, common sense in terms of gravity, if you like, you need to drain upstairs as well. Now, if your boiler is right at the top, I think, you know, you're okay to just drain the bottom and it will flow out and you should be fine. It's not going to, you know, gush out at you. So, after draining down, um, we can isolate the water. Uh, so, your cock sob is uh, right at the front of your house or behind at the back of the house. Um, I've shut off all these valves, I shut off the gas valve. Um, and then, uh, now I had a bit of a tricky issue where I still had water in the unit with a slight bit of pressure. Now, to know that you've drained down the water properly and it's not gonna blow up in your face, you do wanna get that down to zero. What I'm saying, however, though, is even when I drained it down to zero bar, um, there was still water in this circular unit with a slight amount of pressure, which meant when I was releasing this unit out, um, it was gushing a little bit. Now with electrical supply there, even though it's shut off, um, that could be a little bit dangerous. So um, what I did, there is a valve here, allows you to put a hose on, um, I had to drain it. It was a little bit of a weird size, but I managed to get uh, something to hose out straight into the toilet, um, you release the valve and it alleviated the pressure there was still a lot of water in the actual unit itself. Um, I think there is a step to be able to drain that properly. I'm not experienced enough to know that, but um, I think it, the, the key thing is, um, is it away from electricals? Is it pressured? 
Um, if you've alleviated the pressure, then you're just gonna have water just leaking out. You just gotta make way for that water to just fall out, essentially. Um, so now the next step is, um, and one I've just done, I've just changed the NTC um, uh, sensor, temperature sensor. Um, it's literally just a clip, you put it out, change the uh, cable over. Uh, if I've got the old one here to show you. Um, unfortunately, it's missing. Uh, good riddance because it looked pretty bad. Um, and now uh, the next step is to, so I've taken off these rings, which are the old rings from inside where I took the old exchanger off. The problem is I've got a lot of gunk on there, a lot of lime scale and, and sludge. So what I'm gonna do is just get a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and I'm just gonna clean at the back uh, those pipes. So when I get the fitting on, it will be a nice clean seal and hopefully get rid of some of the grit that's there so it doesn't damage the new heat exchanger. Um, so I think, uh, well, uh, I think I've got about half an hour left on this job, to be honest, and um, I'll then uh, fill the system back up, which I think is a two-stage process. So, you know, I've got to pump water back in by uh, running the loop through um, and then uh, making sure that I've only got one radiator with the bleed valve open so it allows the air to then, you know, escape while the water fills through the pressure will raise um on you know on, on the bar to probably one and a half bar and then i'll go around and then leak the other radiators because there'll still be air in all the other radiators because i completely drained down the system just to be safe um and then i'll have to probably put a bit more water in and just do that a few times to get the uh, uh the water all through um if you hear gargling you got air in there um and then have a shower and see if it works also, just proof that, you know, uh, hopefully I'll find out that it is definitely this issue, but uh, where I said the water flow slows down for the heat exchanger and, and heats up too quickly, this is this is evidence of it. So this, this is a sort of a heat shroud that protects the back of the uh, heat exchanger. And you can see it's just completely melted away and brittle. Um, so it's done its purpose. I'm probably going to flip it the other way around so it does, <laughs> you know, continues protection for a number of years. Um, now the back of my walls... Uh, uh, got a two level fire protection plasterboard so I'm I'm not too worried about it setting on fire um it's pretty safe uh and the fact that the mechanism actually switches off because of the temperature uh sensor so yeah I I that I think is proof that um it was overheating because it was slowing down because there's crap built into the heat exchanger uh now don't get me wrong there are ways that you can clean this out with acid I'm just not a fan I don't like getting rid of acid down the drain um uh, there is a way to uh, pH level balance it with alkaline, but I um, I rather stay away from it. And if it's going to be water that's gushing out of your shower head, I'd rather just spend a hundred pound and get a new one. I want to show you the sensor. This is the old uh, NTC sensor. Um, you can see. I the thing is, it doesn't touch the water, and I think this is corrosion just over time in terms of the humidity in the air. I think. Regardless though, I mean, it's not a massively old bo a boiler, maybe seven to eight years old. Um, this cost five pound to replace. Um, so whilst doing the job, I just did the NTC while I was at it. it saves me a future issue. Um, so that's definitely one to pick up um, and an easy one to fit in. I mean, it took me seconds to put this in uh, once I had the uh, heat exchanger out. All right guys, just to finish off this video, um, I'm gonna show you it completed because it's a bit hard to hold a phone while you're trying to do the work. Um, so, Right, a few things. I managed to get the heat exchanger in, the new one in. Uh, whilst it was out, obviously I, was, I managed to get the, uh, um, if you can see there, um, and sticking out and a wire coming out of it. That's the temperature sensor, uh, or NTC sensor. Um, a bit fiddly to get back there. Um, there is an orientation, you'll know by just the screw fixings. Um, so I was being a bit stupid in terms of which way around I had it, but Eventually got it in, but when I enabled the pressure, water started coming out everywhere. Now, I knew something was wrong, um, purely because I actually turned off the water into the boiler. Turns out this thing's a little bit dodgy and I didn't turn it off properly. So, um, cleared up the mess. Uh, lucky I had a tray here. Uh, I then um, tightened this up, opened the water and just left it so I could test this by opening it up to see if there's any leaks. Um, now the issue I had and why there was a leak and it sprayed everywhere is 
because the seals it came with were completely wrong, even though it's for this model. So I cleaned up the old seals and put them back in um, and tightened it up. And you don't need to tighten it up too much. The mechanism almost, you know, because of the seals, it tightens itself. Um, and then uh, one other thing is uh, slightly bled this to get a bit of the air out, um, the closed loop circulation. Um, switch the water back in um, to get the pressure, uh, 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 just to get the water kind of running through and that worked fine. And then I switched the water off because the next step is filling back the boiler with water um, in the closed loop system and repressurizing. Um, and that's a tricky job, but it, it, you just go back and forth, take your time with it. And essentially all you're doing is you open up the valve um, in each of the radiators, because I've led all of them, so there was air in all of them just because I wanted to kill two birds with one stone. Um, so you fill up a bit of pressure with your uh, feedback hose, um, bring it up to maybe half bar, and then alleviate the pressure so the air comes out so the water can fill in. Do the same, go back and forth a bit, and what you'll find is the air will keep bringing that bar down um, as you alleviate the air pressure, then you pump it up with water pressure and you wanna get it over one bar. I mean, it's slightly down, but that's fine. Yeah, the fundamental thing is that's not changing uh, and that's the key thing uh, with boilers. Right, so um, one other thing is don't open these cases. So I had this unhinged because I was just trying to check if this was all sealed properly. It let us seep in a bit of air and gave a bit of pop when I went for the first uh, switch on. So just don't touch that, leave the gas out of it. You don't need to go into that. Um, and uh, why, what else? Okay, so I here's the other issue I had. I ran the hot water, and I, luckily I got a tap here. I could see the fire burning, uh, you know, the spark plug uh, lighting the gas as normal. Um, I did switch it to summer mode, so we just experimented with the uh, uh, tap water, you know, the domestic hot water first. Um, I can actually now switch that over because we're running good now. Um, and uh, the issue I had essentially is that when I put the water pressure back in, the, the normal mains water through, the pressure was still low because I hadn't untightened this um, enough. So weird problems I'm having with this, but essentially uh, it's quite a long way to untighten to get good pressure coming out. And because of that, low pressure was going through the, uh, 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 the the heat exchanger and doing the same thing I had the existing problem with, except it was just caused by something else now. Um, so I allowed more pressure to go through, it runs through properly, and now the uh, the gas light when I'm running the hot water does not turn, out, turn off. Um, I've just run the shower now for the last uh, 10 minutes, consistent, nice amount of temperature, I can play around with the actual temperature. I want a maximum output on this. Read the manual. This should be roughly max 60 uh, degrees Celsius. Um, so I'll leave it about there because I've got a little baby. Um, and I'm gonna put the cover back on, um, check it over a little bit. Uh, it's running the heating at the moment now, hence obviously because I've switched that over to winter mode, which on, depending on the boiler, that means both domestic water and heating. Um, a good trick as well to save energy in the summer, so I'm just to switch it to summer so the heating never switches on. Um, and we're good. Uh, all in all, that cost me £110, £80 for the um, the heat exchanger. Um, it cost me, yeah, I didn't end up putting out the back there, I'm gonna have to find another heat proof material. Um, cost me a tenner for some grippies, though I didn't even use them. Um, crucial, crucial tool um, is uh, a long uh, screwdriver. Uh, get them on Amazon, I think I paid like £10 for a set of three um, because you need to get quite far back into that screw fixing without that you're, you're not going to be able to do this job um, a hose, though that was the wrong one try and make sure you check what hose you need beforehand um, I ended up having to uh, rip this off to kind of attach it to the uh, the expansion hose um, outlet to actually leak it straight into the toilet um, luckily I've got my wife to help me a bit so just try and get pick up a couple of hoses so you've got the you know you're prepared um, a normal garden hose as well for uh, the back radiator to bleed the system uh, which I showed you earlier uh, all in all happy with that um, so much cheaper than an out of warranty uh, four to five hundred pound job or a call out from a boiler who's going to charge you about 100 150 quid um, now look th 
it's it's a job you can do if you're handy with this sort of thing. If if it's the first time you're doing it, like me, just make sure you've covered this, the the crucial things, right? Is there power, and have you switched it off? Is is everything isolated? Now, if you don't know what to isolate here, you need to do more research, okay? Um, have you drained out the boiler system? Has that pressure gone down to zero? Are you at risk of anything exploding in your face? And again, the same thing goes for when you actually bring the pressure back into the system. I still had air in the radiator, and it was causing this radiator to make some weird noises, uh, this boiler to make some weird noises. So I carried on the bleeding process, going up and down, up and down the stairs, just to make sure I've uh, bled properly. There probably is a systematic way to do that properly. I saw some videos on it on YouTube. Um, but just just take your time with it. That you know, write off a day for doing this, but take your time with it. You don't need to rush doing these things. Ease the pressure in slowly. Stop it, stop the pressure, go back, check it. Um, this will raise up a little bit, hold, and then keep repeating that until you get the pre pressure to the point that um, you had it before, really, uh, which is one to one and a half bar. Um, thanks for uh, viewing my video. Um, complete amateur here. Um, if you're not comfortable with anything I said, um, please take this all with a pinch of salt. Um, I say try this at home, but try this at home if you understand electronics, you understand um, pressure and piping and the basics of uh, a combi uh, system. Um, you know, you're playing with gas, electrics and water here. So, you know, if you're not comfortable with that, just write it off and just get someone else to get a professional to come in who's licensed to do so. However, this job saved me a lot of money. I managed to do this myself, you know. So um, for those that are handy with it, this hopefully should help a little bit in terms of the experience I went through. But this is no, no way am I advocating doing this yourself because this should be done by a professional. Um, and I'm not a professional. Thank you.